a massive, massive game we need to talk about. Dying seconds late in the game on Saturday in Perth. Twilight match between the Dockers and Kangas. We've got some great shots of the North coach Clarko celebrating a goal which gives them a 20 point lead with only 6.5 minutes left. Now I could have gone full in depth on this game but we can get away with a passage which sparked a lot of talk over the last week. Frio through Amira get one back to make it a 13 point game with 4 minutes left. Another quick one from Amira to get it back within 7 with only 2.5 left. And another through Brennan and Cox while being tackled to make it a one point game and just about every North fan is bewildered by what is happening in front of their eyes. With their hearts in their throats, North fans just have to watch on for which the next two minutes feels like two hours. Both coaches watch on in horror, Long Mule with the big breath <sighs> and Clarko hands to knees. Nah, time to squat. We'll scrub forward to a minute 20 left. Long high ball in the direction of Darcy. Could have been a potential push in the back to Howe. Goldie drops what is just about an uncontested mark and McDonald swooped upon and gets pinged for holding the f***ing ball as his arms were free to dispose of it. The free kick going to the experienced Walters. No leads on offer so he pops it to the top of the square. No mark as Darcy again looks as though he infringed play with an arm chop on Logue. Not paid and we'll throw it up to catch our breath. Looks to be just about all 36 players on the screen and at this point from a freer perspective, I don't care if the ball goes through for a behind. Of course you're looking for a goal to take the lead, but not knowing the time is a massive factor to get any score considering it's a one point ball game. So if you're Fremantle, you should be thinking to either take the two points and draw or win. A loss shouldn't be on the cards considering the ball was inside the 50 for about two minutes. Just when you think another tackling kick is going through for a goal, Sheasel the goalkeeper blocks the f***ing ball from going through in desperation and even clears the ball along the ground. How about that? A second gamer with the knowledge of a veteran. Doesn't want to rush it behind because he knows that if the ball is a minus score, there won't be enough time to get it to the other end, and even having possession isn't worth it for a behind. If they have come this far into the game, North either wants to win or lose. Nothing in between. Whereas Frio, as we mentioned, should have the draw or win mentality. The desperation from the North players to not rush it behind was f***ing mental, and is the attitude all of these players should have, to never give up. Now let's swing it across to the insufficient intent in the last 20 seconds of the game. Curtis Taylor pumps one in the direction of the boundary line where no North players are, indicating the insufficient intent to keep the ball in play rule. Correct decision appointed by the umpire. Got some fans approval too. This guy with the sunnies on is clearly at the wrong venue. Green Day last played here in 2005 or some shit. We've got a couple of coaches in the stands as well, barking and directing orders of where the ball should go. Clearly the ball isn't going the other way, people. Big thumping kick long when there may have been a couple of leads on. Larky almost with the fist, which would have lost the game. North fans must be very grateful he is a Ford and completely missed his fist. There are now four goalkeepers on the line and how with a desperate clearing kick and no Frio player rushed the ball for a behind. The ball on the way out for another insufficient intent but the siren sounds and the game is over. The North players celebrate, the coach celebrates and the siren has everyone wondering what the f*** is going on. A couple of North players are waiting decision as the umpire finally blows the whistle and the hands go up to signal the end of the game. The shock of the North players, the boos from the Freo fans in the stadium. You cannot write something better for the fans of footy except maybe the Freo fans. Join in the chorus stopped as quick as it started and we've got a little discussion going on with the players. McDonald runs over and just straight up rudely interrupts. Game over? The umpire turns to look at him like hang on you f Talking it over. Hands to the air, McDonald runs back to the teammates, doesn't give a f about anything or anyone else. Coaches again celebrating and join in the chorus plays. Freo players look on in disappointment. Flaming f***ing Nora. Let's have a look back at some of the shit that went on then. But before that, let's have a deeper look into the rule, sufficient intent. So 18.10 f***ing some numbers. Spirit and intention players shall be encouraged to keep the football in play. 18 point f***ing who cares. Free kicks out of bounds. A field umpire shall award a free kick against a player who kicks handballs or forces the ball over the boundary line and does not demonstrate sufficient intent to keep the football in play. So now that we know that, if we have a look at Brayshaw's kick out of the middle, this is directed to earn ground coverage for the Fremantle team. Not necessarily directed at someone, especially late in the game, where field advantage is most important. The ball bounces about 5-6 to six metres from the boundary line and the ball scurries over the line, which no Freo players were within sufficient distance for this not to be paid sufficient intent. Umpire saw otherwise and elected to call this fair game, though not many North players were appealing the call on this one. Incorrect decision. The next insufficient intent we saw was when Taylor thumped one to the boundary line with the Freo player Clark already running towards the ball, giving the umpire all the more reason to pay the free kick. Good call in terms of the 
laws of the game. Nothing too much to discuss about this one here, other than we can always appreciate a good umpiring decision in any sport, let alone as important as it is in this situation. Correct decision. The final insufficient intent which was not paid is the big talking point. The ARC or AFL Review Center confirms that they have made the correct decision. Let's break this down and have a listen. Now for some reason we can only hear this in one ear if you're wearing headphones, but let me just adjust this for you because f knows the ARC won't. We can hear one of the on-field umpires shouting pay it, as in yes, this was insufficient intent to keep the ball in the playing field. The next thing we hear is siren, siren, siren. A major thing I need to mention is when the siren goes and where the ball is, as we will need this information for the upcoming theories. Now let's assume that there were 5 minutes left or 30 seconds left and the ball went out of bounds. The on-field umpire has said pay it and the free kick would have been granted to the Fremantle player as like the second insufficient intent passage we saw. Of course that's not what happened and now we have to dive into the f***ing technicalities of the correct decision. Lots to unpack here but before we do I'm going to wait for you to click the like button or double tap the screen and follow or subscribe. Leave a comment saying something like bananas in pyjamas is quality viewing and probably better than this but hey you're still watching so that's all that matters. Back to it so now we know the rules of the end of the quarter guidelines, we can safely continue with my opinion and not get abused in the comments. Now looking through the rule book, it appears as though the end of the quarter is when any field umpire or emergency umpire first hears the siren. The field umpire shall acknowledge the siren and bring play to an end by blowing the whistle and holding both arms above their head. The interesting thing here is that the rule book states when the umpire first hears the siren, they shall acknowledge this and blow the whistle and put their arms in the air. Isn't it similar to that bullshit of the school bell doesn't dismiss you, the teacher does? But in this case, it's when the umpire or teacher dismisses the players from the field or classroom when they hear the siren or bell. Now we don't have the vision on field of the umpire's arms going in the air in accordance to the siren and the pay it decision so if we head back to the arc and have a listen it should clarify this. They first say pay it, then the siren goes, then five seconds later the umpire remembers his job and blows his whistle and puts his arms to the sky to then go on to say, the siren went before it went out of bounds. That's the call we've made. We cut to the end of the arc video and it abruptly stops as the arc team discuss the decision which would have given us a better understanding. The only thing they did was release a statement which was literally the arc video which you could only hear in one ear and a flow chart pointing at the rule book which gave no f***ing insights. However, even with the umpire's arms in the air shit, the play and rule is for when any field umpire first hears the siren, which was before the ball goes out of bounds, debunking that theory. What about the second part of the rule book? you ask? Another piece of evidence we can look at. It states that, for the avoidance of doubt, if immediately before hearing the siren to end a quarter, a field umpire is of the opinion that a player should be awarded a free kick or a mark, the field umpire shall signal that the players come to an end and then award the free kick to the player. We hear in the arc, pay it, and then we hear siren, so because it was that way around with the pay it before the siren, the umpire could have well saw it that way, however since the ball didn't go out of bounds before the siren, that defeats this second theory also. The last theory to look at because there's too f***ing many, if you kick a goal before the siren sounds and the ball goes through for a score, the score counts. So why doesn't the insufficient intent count if the ball is kicked before the siren? I'll tell you why. Let's say Gordon Ramsay is running goalward. He kicks the ball, the siren sounds with the ball midway through the air and it bounces and it goes through for a score. The game then ends. The opposition, in this case the idiot sandwich, doesn't then get to kick the ball out after a behind because the game is over. The final kick was in play, you undercooked the chicken and killed nine people in the restaurant. So to tell you what happened in this game, the ball was kicked, the ball bounced and the siren sounded with the ball still in play, meaning the free kick was never there to pay unless the ball was already out of bounds. I couldn't imagine there being another 34 kicks after the siren sounds, let alone Gordon Ramsay running with a footy on the MCG, concluding and debunking the final theory. So what I'm saying is that the ball not going out of bounds by the slimmest of margins is what saved North from potentially losing or drawing or even winning because f 
knows if the Freo player would have even kicked it through any of the goals. In the end, I do believe it was the correct decision, though it would be better to clear up the signal to end the quarter with the siren and not the umpires as we've seen in the past. Gee, the siren, right? No. I didn't hear it, but the umpire did. Sorry, I don't think it's gone, right? Holy jeez. That's right. Wait, let me explain. We get this chime that comes through here, meant to go through simultaneous with the siren. If you enjoyed this one, as I mentioned, Bananas in Pajamas has nothing on me, or did I say that the other way around? Doesn't matter. Hit that like button, hit that follow or subscribe button. If you follow me on TikTok, head on over to my YouTube where I post in-depth videos weekly which don't see the light of day on this platform. Play on AFL. Things do better with fun and laughter.